So in terms of our conversations, you know, it's been really interesting. We've been talking with a bunch of current OpenStax adopters. Um, and I think what's interesting really is that there's not that big of a differentiation in terms of the adopter profile from folks in the US to those here in the UK. Um, folks are always looking, faculty are always looking for opportunities to have more flexible learning materials. They're always looking for fantastic value. Um, and I think, you know, you can't get much better than really, really high quality content that's available for free and that also grants you a license to use it in ways that traditionally copyright would have prevented. So I think in, in that sort of um, realm, things are really similar to in, in the United States. Some of the key, I think, differences are, um, it seems as though in some circumstances, there's less coverage of more theoretical, the theoretical basis of some sciences. So for instance, you think more about the application of physics rather than physics as a science in and of itself. And that might might be true, might not be true. It's just some of the conversations we have been having. Um, also, I think that in the US, there may be a little bit stronger education technology um, services market. Um, in the US, we have some something like 50, 50 some odd technology partners that provide things like adaptive courseware, um, online homework, different types of integrations with learning management systems. And perhaps this is sort of an uh, early just observation that will be proved wrong, but it seems as though that's less common, uh, at least amongst the adopters that we've discussed um, OpenStax with thus far. I think something that I, no I noticed was that um, instructors are using their virtual learning environments, which we usually call them a learning management system, um, but they're using these environments to uh, disseminate content, which is, you know, some of our adopters in the U.S. do, but a lot of them don't. Um, they use it for maybe quizzes or really across the board. They use it however they want. Um, but I think just in the past two weeks, just about everyone we've talked to is, is putting content into that. And so to me, that's a good sign because obviously the OpenStax content is open and they can, they can use it in those type of environments, whereas if they use traditional materials or um, you know, something else, it may not be as compatible. So I think that that's actually really encouraging. So at the uh, Variety in Chemistry and Physics Education Conference, um, we noticed in a lot of the presentations, it seems like faculty are already um, you know, doing open educational resources. They're already creating things um, themselves and then sharing them with their colleagues and their students. They're having their students, you know, create uh, content and questions and, and sharing those. And, you know, they didn't necessarily use the term um, open educational resources, but they're already really doing that and they're, they're sharing and I think they already have the right mindset. And so I think, you know, I think one piece of this project could be figuring out who's already doing it um, and encouraging them to take that next step by, for example, you know, putting that CC BY license on it, um, putting it somewhere like the OER Commons hubs, um, just taking that little step um, that can have a wider impact for a lot of mm -hmm. other students and faculty. I think that's an important um, comment, you know, especially in the fact that often I feel as the open community, we can be a little bit of an echo chamber <laughs> where we talk to other people who have already drunk the Kool-Aid um, when in practicality, open education is meant to be shared broadly, right? And that means getting outside of the echo chamber, meeting with actual practitioners, um, and kind of thinking through the use cases that open education can help solve. Uh, and so I think that that's really interesting, and a really interesting observation, and I think that there's, you know, tremendous opportunity there as well.